Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love or something new to discover. That sure is true. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre. Bestsellers, new releases, celebrity memoirs like the Britney Spears book that just came out, mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, and so much more. I personally just listened to Heather Gay's Bad Mormon, um, kind of for Real Housewives of Salt Lake City research, but also just for fun to listen to it because it was a good book. And it's great. I mean, it's her actually reading it. And it is so nice to run around and do my errands and be able to listen to a book. Because let's face it, I will crash my car if I try to read it physically. It's a great use of Audible. So try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappins or text crappins to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappins or text crappins to 500-500. This episode is brought to you in part by Purina. The holidays are here. It's such a fun and festive time and also a great opportunity to reflect on all the things we're thankful for. And if you're like most people, your pet is somewhere at the top of your list. Purina is dedicated to creating richer lives for pets and the people who love them. From helping older pets think like their younger selves to making cat ownership a possibility for more people than ever. Purina is helping pets live longer, healthier, happier lives. Your pet gives you so much the whole year round. So this holiday season, treat your pet with Purina treats. Best in class nutrition, unsurpassed taste. From dogs to cats, Purina has you covered for all your treat needs. Your pet is Purina's passion. Head to Amazon.com backslash Purina to learn more. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is part two of a two part recap. If you're wondering where part one was, well, go check in the feed and be sure to subscribe so that way you always get your episodes. But enough of that. Let's get right back into the episode. So we go back into the meeting room, green room area, and Leah, who's just doing way too much for her first episode, just keeps pointing at the sage stain on the table over and over like, oh, I mean, sage. Can you believe it? There was sage there. So, and Lev is like, yeah, well, this is stressing me out. So I have friends that I need to go say hi to so you can deal with it. And Leah's like, yeah, well, guess what? I got a sage stain on the table. I need to chomp some balls off over. I am furious. Taking care of business. Here I come. Leah CEO. <laughs> Just make sure the A-list stars at the front don't see the sage sage stain in the blue room because that would be a disaster. We would never would want Olivia Flowers to be grossed out by this place. So and then we see Bradley, he's hugging Olivia and, and some others, and he's like sitting with them. He's like sitting in the booth with them. And Lev is like, um, are you working or are you having fun right now? And he's like, both, maybe? She's like, no, no, you are a VIP team, which means you cannot be tending to the guests right now. <laughs> you have to go do something else. It's a very poorly constructed opening to plot. It's hilarious. It's like, what? You're having fun when you're supposed to be partying with the guests? Okay, well, I'm going to work on it. Ask Leah, CEO, for some lines for me. So then Mia is with her guests, and she's like, guys, I want to drink with you and like party with you, but I'm not allowed to anymore because someone just got fired for drinking, and she's a single mom. So, I mean, listen, I'm at Republic for good vibes, and guess what this isn't? It's so not good vibes. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, sorry, everyone. I have to mind my P's and Q's. You know the guests are like, I don't care. You're not our friend. <laughs> We're not trying yeah, to drink with like, you. What? <laughs> right. I know, like, all the guests are going to be sad that the employees aren't drinking out of their $100 champagne. I'm like, I literally spent this money for you to serve me, not to drink what you're serving me. So, um, so they're all talking about how stressful it is not to drink. And Grace Lily's like, yeah, it's like when your parents went out of town and you throw a party and then all of a sudden, like, their car comes at the driveway. That's how it feels like. <laughs> Why do I feel like that happened a lot to Grace Lily? <laughs> because, you know, her parents were like, hey, we're just going to go out to dinner. My parents are going out of town. No, Grace, they just <laughs> went in town. 
So uh, Lucia, Lucia. So then Lucia, who is fired, comes back to the club, which is like, why would you ever? So except on these shows, of course, like this is where Kristen came back to Sir like a million times after she was fired. So here she is pulling the Kristen Doty thing, and Emmy hugs her and everything. And then TJ is like, oh good, there's something for me to be for me to be persnickety about. <laughs> Look, Lucia's here. Can you believe it? She came back here. Who wants to be judgy with me? Anyone? Just me? Yeah. He's like, I wouldn't, I'm not sure I would be a comeback to the scene of the crime, but I mean, this soon, guys. And Chris goes, Oh my God, Lucy is here. She got fired for drinking on the job. Call national security. Get her. <laughs> Tackle her. So Lucy and Emmy talk, and Lucy is like, um, I have to talk to Leva. Like, I do not want to talk to Leva. Like, this is about to be like the hottest summer ever. So, like, I do have to talk to her. You never know what's gonna happen this summer at Republic. It's gonna be huge. <laughs> they're saying they're lowering the prices at Top Golf, so they're gonna have bigger people than ever before, and they're all gonna come here afterwards. So Emmy's like I would be crawling out of my skin right now if I was you and I was about to talk to Leva. Oh my God. She's such a big, important CEO. How could you even be doing this right now, Lucia? So then Leah's, <laughs> then Leah's walking around being the CEO. <laughs> Still really angry about the scene. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she's like checking all the tables. She's like, is there a smudge stain here? There better not be, because that's disgusting. It's for deviants. <laughs> and so Leva is back watching her video screens, and she says, who is behind that bar? <laughs> and Leah comes into the office, and she's like, sorry to interrupt, but hold on i and she starts like doing this pointing like you know how people yeah. like, point and then they're like telling you off with their finger she does that when she talks she's like um i just did a lap and lucia is here point <laughs> and leva's like oh and so lucia's there at the bar and she just keeps on saying she just wants to talk to leva she just wants to talk to leva so leva's like I don't know what she thinks we can do for her, aside from rehire her because we have all the power. But like in my mind, there's just nothing left to talk about. <laughs> and so Lucy is talking to TJ and he's like, um, I guess if I were you, like I would send her a text in the morning after you vacuumed. And she's like, um, I haven't received any communication from love. I guess, okay, but then send her a text or an email after you lube up your Dyson and make sure that it's in working order. And she's like, um, I've been sending emails to talk about my termination. Nothing. Wow. <sighs> wow. Um, it's, you're basically uh, like landing California right now. Faulted. Very faulted. <laughs> I'm not really sure what you want me to say, but mm, I'll just give you this look instead. <laughs> <laughs> so Leah's like, okay, well, guess what? We've received a couple of emails from her. It seems like she's unable to understand her termination, and it's not negotiable, which is a phrase I learned in boss school, which I am, CEO. Mm. And Leva says, well, if we brought her back, like, what kind of example would that be to the rest of the staff? And she's like, yeah, right. It would be chaos. It wouldn't be right. I mean, pants are, pants are dresses now. You know, clouds are, clouds are rainbows. I mean, what are you going to do? Topsy-turvy, upside down. We can't handle this. We, we are not going to do it. And as for the rest of the employee morale, we have to nip it in the bud. We are going to nip this in the point circle bud <laughs> i was like she's yeah. really dedicated this leah ceo <laughs> leah's like you drank and you're caught and guess what there's a new sheriff in town and she knows a thing or two about shrimp cocktail so um love was like yeah she's like it's against the rules love was like it's against the rules yeah it's against the rules it is mm. against the rules Nip it in the bud. And da bud. Right now, nip it. So then Maddie's outside listening at the office door, and Grace Lily comes over and she's like, Hi, what's going on? I went, Shh, I'm listening at the door. I won't listen at the door. <laughs> Maddie's like, She's talking shit. She goes, Who's she? It's Lova's office, Grace. <laughs> mm. So meanwhile, Leah's still in there, shoulder pads. She's like, there's, there's a bad decision. There was a bad decision that was made. And unfortunately, there's consequences. And we caught it. Some would say we nipped it. And if it were a flower, it had a bud. And guess what? That bud has been nipped. Some would say nipped in the bud. And she's gone. She's gone. So then Mia comes up to Lucia in the club. And she's like, oh, my God. Finally, I had a chance to stop away from all that not drinking I'm doing. So what's going on with you, girl? And she's like, oh, you know, just checking on the state of the state. 
She goes, yeah. Well, you know me. I respect big balls. And she's like, you think I have big balls right now? She goes, yeah. You're coming to talk to Leva? And let me tell you, she may not be out here, but she is in the building right now. <laughs> this, I just, big news. The boss of this place is in the place. So, you know, you picked a good night to come Leva here. is being a wuss. She's like sitting out there, seeing her on the video screen, but like refusing to come out to like confront it. You know, right. she's just hiding in her office. Like, like a wuss. Maybe the office was the thing that's new. Because Leva said something was new. And, and maybe because I think actually the office formerly was not on the premises. The cameras are new. The cameras are definitely new. I think the office used to be like in a different building. You have to go up a staircase or something. So... Yeah, uh, she had that a place down the street that she rented last year. Yeah, I remember that plot. Yeah. Where she's like, I rented a place because like, I need an office. So Leva says, telling Leah, you know, I just, I would like an apology. Like, how about sorry i disrespected your business like i don't know if she thought that maybe because she has a relationship with me that she could do that but nobody gets special treatment at the end of the day know what i mean unless you're olivia flowers please give her a bottle of dom perignon from you thank you very much um hold on let me just answer this call uh the caller id says bud let me say bud nick you are next. You are next. <laughs> so then uh, Mia and Lucy are talking, and Mia's like, I'll bet she's in that back room somewhere. Let me check. I got you, girl. <laughs> you mean the so office? Then, um, you mean Leva's office? I bet Leva's in Leva's <laughs> office. <laughs> Thank God for Mia. <laughs> so Bradley is asking where Maddie is. And so this is where they're all hatching their plan, like to make Maddie look stupid. So Bradley's like, where's Maddie? And Emmy's like, I'm, I don't know. She's like the manager of this place and she's nowhere to be found. And he goes, yeah, well, that's not surprising. <laughs> so now Leva, back to Leva. She's like, do you think we should have a staff meeting to remind everyone of the rules? And Leah's like, the rules of Republic, Garden, and Lounge, <laughs> I, of which I am the CEO. And by the way, you can't have a garden without flowers. You can't have flowers without buds. You can't have buds without nipping them. Yes, I do. Let's have a meeting. <laughs> Cut back to Emma. Just... <laughs> Emmy being just like continuing on her like weird plot. She's like, you know what? We need to talk to Maddie about keeping her personal life and her private life separate. Cause she crosses those lines every goddamn day. Okay, why is she what is she on right now? It felt a lot, by the way, when I was watching this, I felt like the show was at like a ten and I had no idea why it was at a ten. Like everyone was like hyped up and angry about something. But like I was like, whoa, you guys just started the episode. What's going on here? it's so funny and bradley's like yeah well now that maddie and trevor are back together she's been living in delulu in delusion land <laughs> yeah, we know what delulu yeah. is thanks bradley. for clarification <laughs> leah's like because what does that mean she's become <laughs> she goes he goes she's become very complacent at work is it surprising no but it doesn't surprise me <laughs> thank well, you you're just answering your own questions <laughs> is it surprising no but it doesn't surprise. Well, you don't say but. Don't say but as if you're going to change direction in the logic. You should say, is it surprising? No. And it continues to not surprise me. So then Maddie is with me in the kitchen now, and she's like, um, okay, I got a little wind from what was going on from behind the door. And Leva wants an apology from Lucia. And Mia goes, ha ha! (laughs) She wants Lucia to apologize for what? And she's like, drinking she's like ha ha well i'll tell you this no fucking way and i gotta ask what's the hypocrisy here and leva comes she's like right behind them this place is maybe five feet big this whole place so leva comes out she's like um hi how are you guys and she's doing her like i'm looking at my phone right now because i'm very busy hi guys you doing something swiping on my phone so if you guys are back here then who's in front ha 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 and so then mia's just like eh, i'm angry at my boss and so she goes joe's out there he's holding it down and so love is like well then why do you guys look so emo and mia says you were looking for an apology from lucia for drinking on the job which by the way mia way to like blow up maddie's spot that maddie was just eavesdropping in the office a second ago 
and now they're having like a standoff because she's gonna tell leva off which i don't know where she really thought this was gonna go yeah so leva says i mean yeah like her apology would mean a lot i mean like if i was in her position i mean like somebody is like you know helped me like somebody's like employed me or they've like brought me back or like brought me opportunities and he says brought her back from what you mean from having a baby she goes um yeah <laughs> she goes okay so after maternity leave basically like what normal companies do for women what the fuck is leva doing by the way <laughs> yeah as well in this scene mia had a very oh fair gosh. point there so leva's like what are you doing <sighs> and mia's like i'm upset she goes what are you what are you doing she goes i'm upset it's the season premiere and i have to be upset about something so she goes well what are you upset about she goes about the hypocrisy you are showing as a boss and that was like hypocrisy what are you talking about like normally people give birth and then they're put into the meat grinder like i didn't make <laughs> the rules that's just how the world works i mean look around how many mothers do you see in charleston <laughs> they're all dead okay so like and by the way there's no hypocrisy if you're in the back of the house and you're drinking you're fired and that's the rule have you read the manual for being hired <laughs> <laughs> Leah wrote it. What does that mean? <laughs> Leah wrote it on Clara's manual, works. If you're going to be... <laughs> Here's how to be hired at Republic. Here's the manual. <laughs> Don't drink. Signed, Leah. Otherwise, it will be nipped in the bud. So Madison is... Maddie's like, oh, oh, Mia, stop. This is your boss. Just, like, chill out a little. Just be, like, a little bit more like Trevor. Just be, like, super chill and kind of sexy. And Leva's like, do you, do you, if you drink back here, you're done. And Mia goes, well, I just don't get it. I don't understand, which by the way, Mia, this is like not a point you should be arguing because even though I said at the earlier of the podcast, it doesn't seem to, to me a big deal if there's drinking on the job. Still, that being said, it's a fairly standard thing that you're not allowed to drink on job. So the fact that she's pushing back is a little like, mm, use your soft skills a little bit more. Okay. Well, she's doing that thing, I think, where we, I don't know if we've all done it. I have, where I'm like, I'm going to fight with my boss. I'm going to tell my boss off. It never goes well. <laughs> yeah. I've tried it multiple times. It has never gone well. So um, Leva's like, yeah, if you drink back here, you're done. She goes, yeah, I don't understand. And Mia says, employees have drank back here so many times. And she goes, oh, really? Well, who did then? Like, who did I keep here that was drinking back here? And Mia just looks around and there's no <laughs> one there. So she goes, me? She goes, oh, really? <laughs> then you're gone too, Mia. You're fired. Clock out. Good night. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> not Mia's brightest moment. Okay. At least pick someone you don't like. <laughs> just so <laughs> so stupid, but at least Mia was smart enough to get Leva admitting on camera, like, yeah, I brought that girl back after maternity uh, like after giving birth. Like, I'm a good person. <laughs> yeah, I've done great things. So Leva's <laughs> <laughs> Mia's like, you're being hypocritical as a boss. Leva's like, you don't need to work here. You said you drank on the shift. You're done. If someone else comes up and tells me that, they're done too. And Mia's like, you're not going to fuck with me. No, you're not. It's like, uh, Mia, you're fired. You, the, you, it's done. <laughs> You, you've already been fired, Mia. You, and she says stupid. that. She's like, Mia, you're fired. Like, you're not an employee any longer. So, like, your butt just got nipped. So, <laughs> and Mia goes, okay, then we're done. And she goes, okay. And also, you don't need to be in the back of the building. Go. Out. Go. <laughs> and then, of course, Emmy's listening. and like, whoa. So... <laughs> <laughs> She's like Angela Lansbury snooping. Like, what? I just learned something. So uh, Mia leaves. And Maddie's like, wow, I would never talk to my boss like that, ever. It's like, well, you didn't do a whole lot to sort of rein her in, did you? So then, well, she did tell her, this is your boss, so yeah. maybe you shouldn't. Mia was just on one. So then Mia storms out, and she goes past Lucy, and she goes, oh, no, now we're both fired. And, you know, she fired me because I said I had a shot during a shift. And so everyone, like, starts freaking out. And then Leah goes up to Leva, and uh, she's like, um, are we okay here? Are we okay? <laughs> and Leva's like, she, she was just like, I drank on my shift all the time, and then you let me stay here. And I'm like, no, I didn't, because I didn't know you drank on your shift. That girl is never going to work for me in any capacity, anywhere, ever again. Consider her someone who just gave birth. <laughs> Unemployable. 
Leva tells us, I hate firing people. I'm not some awful person, but we're running a business here. And it's very important for me that the other incompetent people are not distracted by a different group of incompetent people. Sorry, it's just the way it goes. Mm. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. So then uh, the girls are talking outside to me and Lucia and Grace Lily saying, I mean, I don't agree with it whatsoever, but I think that, you know, like all of us, like, I think that we all kind of feel the way you fall. Is that true? <laughs> no one knows what she's talking about. And <laughs> Emmy's like, this is bullshit. I'm shook. So then we see TJ talking to Maddie and Madison's like, yeah, I mean, Maddie's like, yeah, you know, Mia was speaking to her in a way that like she really gave Leva no choice but to fire her. <laughs> and then Oshin's like, oh, I've been in the club scene my entire life, and we've always been able to have a little dabble here and there, so there's no leeway or anything, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? And Joe's like, oh, I do think the rules are, like, important, but, like, I've created this image of people, like, being able to come into the club to party with me, so, like, now that I can't do that anymore, like, who am I? I'm not Joey Bottles anymore. I'm Joey water bottles <laughs> i love his existential crisis <laughs> yeah. like just who am i <laughs> who am i <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so Mia is still going on outside. She's like, well, my friendship with Lucia means more to me than this job. I couldn't give a fuck, really. And Grace Lily's like, yeah, well, there was a good friend. She goes, I'm leaving. And she just, like, storms off, and Lucia stays. <laughs> it's like, yeah, Lucia doesn't really feel the same. She's going to get her damn job back. But bye. <laughs> She's like, I hear you have an opening, Leva. So um, now it's the next day, people are waking up and everything. Um, and the big thing here is we see Will's butt on screen for a very long time because his hand is in a sling. Um, and so Emmy has to help him get his pants on. Yeah. So then Grace is smudging and she's on her balcony and she's like, please God, protect me from feeling a lot of different energies. <laughs> Just one be energy more specific. today. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, General. Dear God, I don't know what's going on with the energies today, but I looked out at my flower garden and all the all the buds seem to have been nipped. I don't know what's going on, but please protect me from that energy. <laughs> so we go to Oisin looking in his mirror and he's like, I'm still beautiful. Thank God. And um, then we get a song. I want to radiate the sun before I burn out bright my supernova. <laughs> Every song on this show is about how young they are and how it's all going to end soon. Right. And I love that Trixie Monocle has learned. You know, she's like, you're young now. You'll be old tomorrow. Today is up. Tomorrow you're a slag. It's like, damn, jeez, Trixie, widen up. And I also like that the next lyric is, I'm building my empire. Like, I love that the song is, like, really dedicated to this, like, imagery about suns and stars and supernovas, but also, like, I'm building an empire, too. <laughs> like, it's like, one thing doesn't really have to do with the other. But sure, go for it. So, so then um, next day is a meeting. So everybody's coming to do this group meeting about not drinking. And Will is there in his sling. Um, hot. And then <laughs> Emmy is dressed in the same fabric as Joey's velvet headboard, which is weird. And Mikkel's there. We haven't seen him. Yeah, I thought he was and fired for a second. And there's new girls named Aria. Yeah. Say it again? I thought Mikkel was fired for a second because he wasn't even in the first half of the show. Yeah. But he's not. He's here. And so uh, Leah starts it. Uh, I mean, Leva starts it. Leah's in like some kind of a formal ball gown, which doesn't <laughs> really make <laughs> It's all they had at, <laughs> at Boss Emporium, unfortunately. Uh, I guess. It was like, yeah, this is when um, I'm nominated for Best Boss of the Year. So it was the gala. <laughs> this is the Holiday Inn Gala I'm going to. This dress is made from buds because I nipped so many of them. So, um, so Okay, so Leva's saying, okay, guys, obviously it's not been the best week, but, like, we lost to Mia, we lost to Sia, but guess what? You know what Leah always says? Leah, say it. Nit, it, it. No, not that one. The other thing. Uh, nip, it, it. The other thing. Sages for slut. 
<laughs> no. The other thing. Okay, 12, Leah says 12, don't breakfast fire 12 yourself. Breakfast 1299 all you can eat. Yes, that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's nothing we can do when you guys break the rules and that's just how it goes and Leah goes I'm going to make it crystal clear right now drinking is never permitted in Republic Garden and Lounge <laughs> and we are not going to allow that behavior any longer not in this garden not in this lounge don't fire yourself thank you thank you Leah for finally saying it really great expression so they're of course like oh my god like you know, like, like Emmy's like, you know, like you think our best sales nights are when everyone's sober and Bradley's like, I mean, they're going to order another bottle because they want to party with us. That's what they want to do. So then, and Grace is like, don't ruin the vibe. It's wavy, baby. So they're all upset because <laughs> it's all ruined by Leah. Yeah. And Leva's like, I want you to make money because guess what? The next few years for this company are going to be epic. They are going to be epic. <gasps> and Leah's like, guys, we love you all. You are all rock stars, and this is a family. I'm, I can't believe she didn't have that, because that is such the restaurant manager <laughs> thing to say. Like, guys, we're all family here. Let's not forget. I read on a boss website that you should call to tell your employees that they're all rock stars. And so guess what? You're all rock stars, which I think means we have a lot of good morale around here. So anyway, consider these buds nipped, and let's go out and kill it. We're a family. Yeah, and Joey, Joey Marbles is like, this is, this job is like not some side hustle for me. I didn't go back to college because my passion for this, this is my career. I'm Joey Bottles, and I can't lose that. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. It's like, yes, Rocky. Hopefully, Joey Marbles can have tequila at work again. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a real inspirational story, guys. You know, when faced with a decision of furthering my studies and setting myself up for a career in really anything or making signs that say superstars, I knew what I had to do. I had to make the sign. It's my passion. I'm superstars. choosing the one that relies on my good looks and youth <laughs> because <laughs> what, what other decision is there really? <laughs> I had to use the one that relied on my ability to hold a sparkler up in the, in the air pretty high up <laughs> so bradley goes to do his personal training at a high low gym it's called high low and he's got a client named sammy who is just not prepared to be on tv mm -mm. at all i mean it was so, so sad so sammy's like hi oh my god i'm so glad to work out with you like i've really needed to have my ass kicked because i went out with my girlfriends and whoa did we live it up and have a have a hot ass girl time living it up on the town by the way do you know that guy who drives people around on his bike he was hitting on me and like trying to make out with me <laughs> maddie who maddie's boyfriend who's maddie <laughs> <laughs> yeah and he's like, oh, my God, Maddie, Maddie's boyfriend, Trevor, they've been living together for, for a while now. Wow. You have something to say about them? And she's like, oh, I didn't know he had a girlfriend. I hadn't watched the show before. Oh, well, he was with his boys and buying me drinks the whole time. And I said, well, at least stop the cab first. And then we were touching each other. And then one thing led to another dot, dot, dot. Did you make out? And he's like, did you make out? She goes, yeah. <laughs> Serious? You would have no idea that he had a girlfriend. I feel so bad. I wish I had just like seen her on a TV show so I could have known about it before any of this happened. This is crazy. <laughs> he's like, it's karma. She did that to herself. I had this great girlfriend. We were perfect. And then Maddie told her I was in the back alley behind Republic getting my dick sucked <laughs> next to the raccoons <laughs> in the trash. I love a good backstory. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that he's just it's the extra horrified I was in the alley getting my dick sucked by the raccoons <laughs> and the trash it's not lost on me that Kayla broke up with me because Maddie wanted to tell lies oh it's all for <laughs> Kayla so Sammy's, Sammy's like do you want me to do you want to see the text because I'm going to show them to you right now um you get the camera over here do it with your iPhone too he's like I'm totally taking a picture because you know why Carmen's a nasty fickly bitch <laughs> <laughs> Let me get a picture of this text. And by the way, the text says, had a fun time last night. So uh, he's like, this is what, hey, Maddie, this is why you got cheated on twice. Ha, 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 ha. 
Uh, yeah, this guy's such an asshole. And also, he probably was getting his dick sucked in the alley. What was the end of that? He was, wasn't his thing just like, why would you tell her that? She's like, because I saw what I saw. Yeah. Wasn't that the whole fight? It was. And then he had to defend it. I mean, he probably was getting his dick sucked. But, I mean, Trevor's also clearly still cheating on Maddie. But he's basically like, if you're going to ruin my relationship, I'm going to ruin yours. Which is really, you know, yeah. a great lesson to be learned from Vanderpump Rules yeah so now we see mia driving around town and she's behind a bike carriage and she's pissed off she's like get out of the way as we all are yeah you know i mean it's very much how the entire cast feels towards trevor yeah i saw uh, the other day i was driving down melrose avenue and a scooter and a motorcycle like basically crashed into each other and i just missed it like i was like why is this entire lane of cars stopped and like i pulled up just in time to see like the the scooter kid and the motorcyclist they lifted each other up and then they shook hands and drove off together and i was like oh i would have liked to have seen that which is just my point of saying um the scooter is really getting in the way of everything like i would have loved to have seen the scooter kid get hit by a, a vehicle would have been great what am i talking about oh geez <laughs> You know, I rode a, a Vespa for years, right? No, what no, the, the scooter, no, the scooter, no, like the bird scooter, the bird scooter, the little bird scooter. Oh my gosh. Stay on the sidewalk. Those things. Don't, you should not be on that thing in a road where people are going 30 miles per hour and you're on there with your backpack and no helmet. And then we all have to go three miles per hour because you've decided to go in the lane and we care about keeping you alive, you know? So I was like, you remember when they used to have those billboards in LA that said every lane is a bike lane. Oh my God. No. Those used to infuriate me. Those, oh, I was like, no, they're not. Every lane is not a bike lane. Cause then the bicyclist would literally be in the middle of every lane. Like, yeah. Every lane's a bike lane. Get the fuck out of the road. People at least, at least bicyclists can achieve a certain speed. Okay. Although they don't always. And that's what drives me nuts too. It's like, okay, listen, I support green, you know, options for transportation, et cetera, ride your bike. But also like if you're riding your bike, put some effort into it. Okay. Keep up. Okay. Don't go like one mile per hour. I've, Cause you know, people are on there like, just like on this a isn't stroll. Your, yeah. This isn't your neighborhood. Okay. okay if you get in the like lane, leisurely stroll. Yeah. Go as fast as you can. You'll get also some nice cardio out of it too, but don't get, this is not a time for just a, a leisurely bike ride in this 30 mile per hour lane. Okay. So anyway, the point was I was yeah. just, okay. So now I we go mad. see what's going on at Maddie and Trevor's house, and um, they're like a, they're like a, the couple, you guys, and we know because like he's spurting whipped cream in her mouth, and she's laughing, <laughs> and she's like, you know what? He's the only person who gives me that. Mm. He's my like big love. He's my big love. <laughs> so then we go to Grace Lily's house, and she's talking to her cat Fergie, and she's like, "You want your tarot cards, Red Fergie? <laughs> Let's see what the stars got in line for you." We got the Empress and the Sun. That means I rule my emotions, and they don't rule me. Wait, Fergie. Wait, is is Grace Lily giving a reading to her cat or to herself? That feels like <laughs> that's so Grace Lily to be like, "I'm gonna give you your tarot card reading." Oh, look at that! I'm gonna be rich. Just read my cards. <laughs> um, yeah. So. She's like, this year's all about self-care. I just want good energy. Anything negative gets shaken away. Because I'm trying to shake that ass. <laughs> yeah, get that cash. Ding! <laughs> Does Grace Lily make any sense to anybody? Like, first she's giving a reading to the cat, then the readings to herself. Then she wants self-care. Then she's shaking away negative t negativity. Then she's shaking her ass from it. It's like one just kind of thing strung to the next. <laughs> so over in Joe Joey Marble's uh, place, she gets a call from his mom. She's like, Joey, I mean, yesterday you didn't pick up, and then I texted you and nothing. I just need proof of life. You're acting like suddenly you're not allowed to drink on the job anymore. And he's like, sorry, Ma. I'm working a double later. Oh, okay. Well, I don't even know how you do it. I mean, here I'm like, how does one man have the ability to do things like stand at a door and then momentarily go in the back room and write a sign that says superstars? You are something else, my son. <laughs> yep. So then over at Emmy's very clean apartment, which you love, yep. uh, Mia comes over and um, 
they make some small talk or whatever and Emmy's talking about how she's so busy taking Will to physical therapy all over town and she's like last time I was on track for like happy wife happy life but this year is Will in a sling and I don't have a ring <laughs> pause for laughter so um <laughs> <laughs> so uh she, yeah she's gonna open up a bottle of wine for her and mia to enjoy and um they're just like they're hanging out so emmy is like um she's like so i guess let this be a warning to us lucia was lesson number one don't drink on the job and lesson number two is don't yell at the boss am i right? am i right remember that lesson that you didn't anticipate <laughs> And Mia's like and Mia's like well I was really disrespectful to Leva I guess I can see that now she says yeah well you want to set up a meeting with Leva she says no you know how like after an argument or heated discussion you think back and say I wish I did that better or I wish I did this better nope not thinking that I'm on a righteous high cause I'm in finance <laughs> I'm on a high Nance high so <laughs> yeah this isn't my main income I'm not some loser who thinks this is their career and just gets all their money from working at Republic, stupid faces. You know, Emily's like, oh, thanks. So she's like, um, well, if Maddie had, had, had stood up for you, I think this would have been a different story, but she didn't. She doesn't stand up for her employees. And like, I've lost a lot of respect for her. So she's just like, let me find out a way to make this Maddie's fault. Yeah, and then Mia's like, wait, yeah, I am disappointed how she handled this entire dilemma, and I'm getting heated now just thinking about it. And Emmy's I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, she's been with the company now, what, four years? And like, I feel like when she started dating Trevor, she lost her mojo with the company. And Mia goes, great point, Emmy. Just, yeah. I mean, what is she? She's the face of Republic, remember? <laughs> I like that Mia's now like... What does like, that have to do with Mia drinking it, like Mia yelling at Leva at work <laughs> and calling her a hypocrite and then saying, I drink at work? But what does any of this have to do with that? I'm so mad that Maddie didn't tell me to shut up when I couldn't stop talking. What? Damn. So Emmy's like, yeah, Maddie claims to be the bitch who runs this bitch, but she doesn't even care what we even do anymore. She just wants to be with Trevor 24 seven. So um, Emmy's, yeah. like, Emmy's like, so now they give each other like evil smiles. They're like, ha, 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 let's get Maddie. Yeah. Although you're going to have to get Maddie more than me because I'm working in finance and not at, you know, the club anymore. So, um, so now the next song, Summer Young, we're gonna live forever. We're gonna live forever. I think Trixie Monocle is just sitting there with a bottle of whiskey crying as she writes this music. You yeah. know, we're so young. <laughs> Remember the days. Um, so yeah, there's like, uh, everyone's getting ready for the day shift, and Maddie tells us, Maddie gives us a little insight into her craft. She goes, Day Club Sunday is my favorite day of the week because to work all night and then wake up and do it again to maximize sales. Wow. I love a good darty. Day party. Darty. Yeah. <laughs> it's day and a party. Well, wow. so then Maddie is talking to a customer and uh, she's like, what do you do? And she's like just holding a, a blowing bubble machine. It's like blowing bubbles over. She's like, oh my God, you're a DJ? I'm a DJ too. <laughs> what? I am. I'm a DJ. He's it's like, like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many times she does that? I feel like she did that all last season. You're a DJ? I'm a DJ. I'm going to see Dan Summit in Florida because I'm a DJ. It's like time to give it mm -hmm. up. So now uh, Taylor stops by. Taylor, not there to promote Day Chaser, just because she's a VIP. And she's talking to Joe, and she's like, wow, Maddie's so hot. She's like the hottest. Imagine if she liked you. Ha, 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 ha. Bye. So Mikhail comes in with some friends, and they're doing that leading with the phone thing where you like come in, and you're just like doing the like Lebo was doing earlier just like I'm really busy because I have my phone out right now and uh, he's telling us he only works once a week now because he has another job but when he comes he parties and he shakes some ass and pops some bottles and then his girlfriend is like spanking his ass and he's like, yeah. So then we go to shots of Taylor being really thirsty and lifeless at the same time. I feel, they did no, a, I don't feel bad for Taylor. I'm done feeling bad for Taylor. They did a really bad job of recruiting Southern Charm VIP. It's like, was Craig not around? Like, what's up with this, like, 
the Olivia and Taylor yeah. as as the special guest stars is just not as not as strong as it has been in the past. Yeah, they can only get those two. Uh, yeah, the other ones are like we're not helping Leva. Hell no. <laughs> so then we get um, Joe taking shots of soda water with the bridal party, and uh, he's like, "Hey guys, I know you guys thought I was taking the shot right now, but it was really soda water because I'm not allowed to take shots." <laughs> I love <laughs> this announcement. Uh, and she goes, oh, well, I thought I saw chest hair, but you drank only soda water, so I guess not. Pussy! She's like, hey, whoa, whoa, that's a little hard on me. So then um, Matt... But also literally does not have one spot of hair on him. <laughs> he oh, we've seen. We saw smooth. the opening scene. <laughs> it's very smooth. So uh, Maddie's then, she, she's telling a group of girls... Uh, she's like, sorry, like there's no, there's, there's rules here. And every, like, by the way, everyone here has, knows each other and everyone slept with each other. So that's the rules of this town. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're just like, what's Charleston? Like, she's like, this is what Charleston is like. Everyone's fucked each other. And that's it. They're like, oh. So then Brad goes back to the, he goes to TJ at the bar and he's like, so one of my clients told me that she met Trevor out all night and made out with him. And then he was hitting her up all night, blowing up her phone, trying to get her to come home with him. And TJ's like, oh my God, that is fucked. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. This is vacuuming just, right now. I'm going to finish this later. <laughs> really want to vacuum. So. Brad's like, okay, well, since you didn't ask, here, I'll show you the text. Like, here, check it out. So they look at it, and TJ's like, oh, my God. Uh, he's like, this is going to be a shit storm. I'll need two vacuums to clean it up, okay? And I am here for it. So they are, like, of course, so excited that they can, you know, they can basically have some, they have some vague evidence that Trevor cheated so they can, you know, go break up this relationship. So back in the kitchen, Maddie's back there and uh, like, what are you doing, bud? Cleaning my shoes. So um, how are you and Trevor? She's <laughs> like, good, dirty. good. I, I just feel like we're at that point like where, you know, like, like we just don't like date for fun anymore. You know what I mean? Like well, now we're like dating, dating. And he goes, yeah, dating for fun is like stupid, right? Just, yeah, it's like so dumb. So now like we're happier and we're closer than never. Know what I mean, Bradley? We're at that, like, just staring at her chomping gum. We're at that place where like we put like whipped cream in each other's mouth. It's kind of like we have charcuterie for breakfast. So Brad's like, well, uh, just want to make sure um, because one of my clients came up to me and said that Trevor sucked here multiple times. They made out and everything like that. So, <laughs> so she's like, um, yeah, I already knew about the text messages. So like nothing happened. Like whatever. He was like apologetic. It's so already like, wait, how would you already know about the text messages? Like what? Huh? I'm confused. So wait, why? So was he coming clean because he knew he did something wrong in front of people who were probably going to tattletale on him? Or are you? do you have access to his phone? What's going on? I hope it's B. Yeah. Because you should. So when you're dating Trevor, you know what I mean? And so she's like, well, I don't have time for Bradley and this bullshit. He just wants me unhappy. And then Brad's like, um, I mean, did he leave out the part where he was like making out with her and trying to grind on her? <laughs> and Emmy's listening. She's like, look at me. <laughs> wiping down a dish even though we don't have dishes here <laughs> sorry just putting up those christmas decorations a few months early can never get ahead of it too much commercials here comes one right now so brad's like oh i thought you knew that maddie they made out at the bar so do you not believe me and she's like he was making out with her Oh my God. He goes, you should trust someone. If you don't trust them, you should be done with your boyfriend. So then she's like all mad. Yeah. She's like, fucking liar. Hell no, fucking liar. So she storms out and Emmy's just like doing that pulling her hair thing that people do on these shows where they're like, oh my God, I'm crazy. Are my extensions still there? <laughs> so then um, in the smoking alley, the serious smoking alley, she starts like, calling trevor over and over again and um it's like hey ding ding i'm on a bicycle right now ding ding purr. almost just got run over actually leave me a voicemail and so she's texting saying where the fuck are you pick up the fucking phone and then she leaves a voicemail and she's all angry and she goes fuck this shit i gotta go so she picks up a shovel there's like a random like large shovel there <laughs> like she's gonna like you know, do some gardening and she picks up the shovel and then just like heads out. So <laughs> what is she going to do with this shovel? And she's driving off. And Emmy, of and course, Emmy. is like under the car, like Cape Fear style, like 
<laughs> just just working on your muffler. <laughs> so um, she runs off with the shovel and then he sees her and she goes, if I had done that, I would be fucking gone. And Bradley's like, yeah, damn right. Where's Joe? Get Joe over here. <laughs> so Joe, Maddie just left because Trevor made out with one of my clients. And Joe's like, wait a minute. What? Are you sure that they made <laughs> out? And he goes, yeah. <sighs> and then we cut to Madison, or Maddie in her car going, idiot fucking idiot <laughs> so then so then brad joe and emmy and tj are talking and tj's like tell me everything tell me just okay show me on the vacuum where trevor hurt at maddie and emmy is like okay so bradley just told me that maddie that told maddie that trevor cheated and then she left with a shovel like oh, no way no way <laughs> <laughs> and Bradley goes, she just clocked out. Which I love that they're trying to make Maddie this <laughs> irresponsible, terrible hag of a human being who doesn't deserve her job. But even when they try to get her so furious that she storms off the set, which she did, she still clocks out. <laughs> <laughs> Bradley's like, yep, she was super pissed. She took a shovel. She married some ketchups on her way out. <laughs> Asshole. Leah's like, she took our shovel. That is stealing from the property. And guess what? We're going to nip that in the bud. She is fired. You cannot steal the shovel. So Maddie is driving and she's like, oh, he has a nice TV. Well, that's about to get smashed. She's like vaping out the window. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get that TV. So then Joe's like, well, then at least this loser might be out of our fucking life for good. Like every negative thing about her is because of him. And Bradley's like, yeah, you know what? If you want to put it on someone else, that's fine. But she made those choices on her own. She's in denial. So she gets to the house that she lives in with Trevor and then she can't, when she's holding the shovel she's going to bring the shovel inside the house and then she walks in but the door is locked and I guess she doesn't have keys to her own house is that the thing or maybe she left in such a haste that she left the keys behind but either way she's trying that door and she can't get in to her own house like, yet again so she calls and then this time he answers which is like the worst time to answer because now she's outside with the shovel Right. Well, now he, you know, he was avoiding it on purpose because he knows she's shooting today. But now he sees her at the door. <laughs> he's like, oh, shit. Now I have to answer. So he opens the door and he's like, OK, you can come in, but they can't. Meaning the cameras. And she's like, what the fuck, Trevor? And he goes, take your mic off. She's like, no, step away from the door. And he does. And then they shut it. And you just hear her going, you were making out with some ugly fucking hoe. He's like, I didn't do anything. Fuck you. I fucking picture getting married married to you and having kids with you i mean you haven't fucking changed because <laughs> i didn't cheat on you i just made out with a girl at the bar um he doesn't say that part but that's in my mind and she's like you're a fucking liar he's like, i haven't i promised you you're making a big decision right now because i didn't do anything i'm like well if you didn't cheat on her then why did you not want the camera crews in for this part of the conversation sir yeah um he's a lying you are a lying sir and uh, she's like oh god i don't know you can even look me in the eyes how could you do this to me the morning after you gave me charcuterie because <laughs> i haven't done a single thing she's like i just want to be happy ah. um ma'am yeah. if you're gonna bring a shovel into the house i better hear some things breaking like i want you slamming on coffee tables i want you slamming lamps i want the whole thing i mean don't hit him violence is never the answer but breaking shit in your apartment would have made it would have been wonderful i know this is supposed to be art you know that's like Chekhov's shovel like when <laughs> Chekhov said if you Chekhov have a gun shovel. the gun has to go off you can't just have a gun you can't introduce a gun into a show and then it just never goes off where's the shovel what's the shovel gonna do she's like oh i forgot to mention after i yell at, at trevor i do actually have plans to uh <laughs> to do some digging somewhere else that's all it was purely coincidental so that was the premiere well it, it was sort of it was a little extra, but it was silly. I enjoyed it. It was a breath of fresh air, you know? Loved it. Excited yeah. to see what happens. Love the show. Um, 
Wow, we I mean, have no idea what we're covering. We're not getting screeners for this show, um, so we don't know. It makes it harder because it makes like one part of the week like bloody hell. So yeah. we don't know. Hopefully, we'll keep covering it because we really like it. Um, but there's so many shows on Bravo, and we'll be here every day forever yeah, doing this. Forever. So just keep coming back. Check us out on video on Crappens on Demand and bonus episodes on Patreon because Vanderpump Rules time is back. So, guys, it's yeah. about to be time for some more Pump Rules action at the end of John's. And uh, we're going to do that trailer on our bonus this week. So, thanks so much for being here, and we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no less namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying. It's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kiss arino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg. You can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo. Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Chadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch. It's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch Our Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com survey.